Aaron, during minicamp, yeah, minicamp, you mentioned that 80% of the passing game went through Devontae. So, is it, what's the adjustment now for you? Is there any? Is it because you're still going through read one, two, and three, or does anything change? Not necessarily. It's just that he was in the position to be the one most of the time. So now that obviously gets switched around. But I said it many times, Devontae was usually open. So when you have a usually open guy in the number one spot on many of the reads, he's going to get the lion's share of the targets. How would you rate the performance so far offense in this uh, seven days in the game? I, mean, I think it's kind of gone how, how we thought it would go. You know, defense, uh, other than the first day, has been giving us uh, some issues up front. But there's been some days where we've ran the ball really well, I think. I thought, you know, we had a couple good uh, periods yesterday, one-on-ones I thought looked really, really good for us. I love, I love doing one-on-ones, and it's good for our young guys to go against veteran guys like we had matched up yesterday. Red zone drills, you know, usually favor the defense. Uh, early in camp. Uh, I don't think we're doing a great job in some of the protection pickups, but the best part is there's a lot of film to correct. Coaches love that. And a lot of guys are you know, starting to click in and, and have uh, some better practices. An offensive line, um, you know, one day you're going to get Dave back and help you. But right now, outside of Yash, you don't have guys that have a lot of game experience in the NFL. Is that like the youngest group that you wind up behind? It's definitely a young group. Definitely a young group. But Yash has played some good football. So we have a lot of confidence in him. And I think Royce, you know, has been playing some tackle and guard for us. He's got some flexibility. And then we gotta see what we have with the young guys. You know, the guys with two first names. We gotta see if they can you know where they're gonna be playing at. Uh, but I, I like what we've done uh, Really, at center and left guard, I think I've been really consistent. You know, when John Ryan uh, Runyon came in, John Ryan, that's funny. <laughs> and I was just actually talking to Mason about John Ryan, so that came out a little slip there. But uh, John Runyon, when he came in, he was a pro's pro. Maybe because he's been around his dad and seen what it looks like, but the game has never been too big for him. And Josh is such a big, wide body. Uh, although he, he's a heavy sweater, and so <laughs> indoors in a day like today in a walkthrough, uh, we had to get him multiple towels. But uh, remind me of uh, Evan Dietrich Smith a little bit. But uh, I like how those guys are playing. And, and really, the other spots are up for grabs until Dave and Elton get back. What stood out to you about the start the camp that Romeo was at? No, it's never been too big for him. Uh, I really like the approach. He's a very humble kid. But you're starting to see the personality come out a little bit, which is fun to see. He's had a lot of opportunities, which has been great. You know, with Sammy not, not practicing a couple days and obviously Christian being out, a lot of opportunities for him. He's made the most of it. I thought, you know, it's not just the team stuff. I thought he ran good routes yesterday in the one-on-ones against, against Stokes. And, you know, it's just a matter of the mental stuff. You know, he's still making some mental mistakes, but you expect those. Um, it's, it's the... Uh, the approach, though, and his release patterns. He gets the ball with his hands. He's, you know, every single day, you guys know you've been watching, there's been at least one kind of wow play from him, and that's kind of rare for a young guy uh, like that. Now, we've had some guys over the years kind of do that, but, you know, they're all in the top 10, I think, in the Packers receiving history, so good start for him. Aaron, a lot of attention's paid to the receivers, obviously, in camp, but as it pertains to being a receiving back, how elite is Aaron Jones league wide? Do you feel like he's those pass catching abilities and route runners? Yeah, I think he's fantastic out of the backfield. He's done a lot of stuff for us in that respect. You know, coming out of the backfield and catching balls, running option routes, uh, threw a whole shot to him against Atlanta a couple years ago. Uh, he made an incredible catch against Washington, backed up uh, to kind of put that game away. So he's, you know, another Chiefs game at the Chiefs. He went 19, he took a screen and went 75, ran a sluggo outside and basically scored, but barely stepped out of bounds. Uh, he's very versatile. But let me just highlight the mayor of Door County. <laughs> when he came in here, you know, he was a big back who you expect to be able to run power really well. And I feel like of all the people we've had in the last three years, he's got to be in a very short list of guys who have improved so drastically. And his pass catching ability is really, really solid. And he's made difficult catches look easy 
over the last couple of years in this training camp. And I couldn't be more proud of 28 and his approach, uh, the, the way that he's handled not just being a player in this locker room, an ascending player, but a member of this community. A.J. Dillon, is, uh, he's a Green Bay guy now. How long should it take, in your opinion, a receiver to earn your trust? You talk about receivers, receivers earning the quarterback's trust. Everybody matures at their own pace. How long, in your opinion, should it take, though? I don't know. It's, it's not a should. It's just it's when it happens. It's the combination of uh, performance and preparation. Uh, those two are both really, really important. And it's the ability to recall things in the moment very quickly, to expect you know, certain hand signals or adjustments in real time. And it's a process. Everybody takes different amounts of time. It's been years for certain guys. It's been weeks for certain guys. So it's just really about the performance. And when it's paired with the preparation, it's a, the beginning of the trust being built. And then it grows over the years. And like you've seen with some of the rapport I've had with some guys here, you know, it can be pretty, uh, pretty dangerous when you're speaking the same language telepathically. In that regard, just how much of a concern is it not having Chris Jones this first week or so? Is there still plenty of time for him to catch? No, nah, not a big concern. I mean, he's he's a really smart kid. I know he scored really high on the Wonderlook test. I want to retest if he's higher than me, but uh, <laughs> but no, he is a smart kid. Uh, you know, it's, it'd be nice if we could get him off the pop so he could do some of the walkthrough stuff, but. He'll be fine. He's super athletic. He went through the whole off-season program with us, the OTAs and mini camp, and he's been in my hip pocket. You guys have seen he's been in my hip pocket, asking questions uh, after periods and and uh, during individual time. So uh, I'm not not worried about him. Aaron, there was a day, I think it was last week, where you were talking to Rasul between periods for three or four minutes. You mentioned Christian. Why, why does a guy like you spend the time to do that stuff with other guys? Well, I want to win badly, and. You got to communicate to win. Uh, with Christian and with Romeo and Samari, it's a lot of uh, me teaching them and reminders about certain situations that they probably haven't thought of before or might not have had reminded in their room, which is no knock on Jason because he does a fantastic job. But there's just little things through the experience I've had over the years that, that are good reminders for those guys. Rasul is one of the smartest guys I've ever played with. He reminds me a lot in the deepest respect of Charles Woodson. Uh, he has incredible ball skills. He baits you at practice. He has the competitive fire that, that Charles did. But that may have looked like me talking to him, but it was as much him talking to me. I love picking his brain because his ability to see the game and concepts, and I think it's important that we share both sides, me sharing with the defense, their disguise, uh, their uh, eye discipline on certain things that can help them. And I need their feedback, like I told them the other day, on the receivers. You know, you got to let me know because we're trying to win here. It's not about competitive advantage in practice. What can I tell these young guys on how to little things to improve the route running, uh, their eye discipline, the just little things in the details. So I love picking uh, Jaws' brain and, and Rasul's brain, especially and and, uh, and Sav and and Adrian as well. Aaron, your targets with the receivers could that become more prominent as? The young receivers only a handful, and then the system kind of gets you comfortable enough to, to get it out there. Spread it around. Well, I think we're just going to have to throw some of them in the fire. To be honest, uh, we're not sure, obviously, when Christian will be back. But you know, there's going to be in the, you know, in the two deep, which plays a number of snaps. There's going to be young players. You know, other than Allen and Randall, those guys have played with me a good amount. Juwan's played limited, Malik's played limited, Amari's played very limited. Sammy hasn't been with us. And then you got a couple uh, a couple rookies. So we're gonna have to throw them in the fire and and, and have a little, you know, learning process. Uh, I think that's where the uh, the patience and the, uh, the expectations, reasonable expectations will be very important. That being said, there'll be a lot of conversations between now and game one and the expectation will be to be able to recall the important conversations and go out and execute and just be yourself. Speaking of expectations, when you, you talked at the outset of camp about your expectations for your defense yeah. being talented on paper. A week into camp, is there anything that stands out to you that A, uh, affirmed what you thought, or B, surprised you in any regard with that unit or specific person? I mean, I wouldn't say surprised. I, I would say I enjoy the the some of the the pressure packages that we got in so far. I loved uh, how we finished the season last year, and, and there's been some 
really aggressive stuff that we've been working on in practice, which is fun to go against. It tests our offense, protection schemes, and adjustments, and eye discipline. I will say the one guy that's kind of jumped out that I hadn't got to see really is is Quay. Um, you know, to see him uh, run around out there and make plays uh, has been great, and he's with an absolute pro next to him. The other thing that makes me smile the most is watching 59, because there's a little something that changes naturally when you get paid you know it gives you this this ju not justification but it kind of cements uh, the integrity of your leadership opportunity and to watch him continue to expand that role as a leader and the lead, really the leader of the defense has been has been great to see and along with that you're seeing him raise up and and give a voice to the Rashawn Gary's and Kenny Clark's and uh, you know of, and, and smash and and then you see him Preston continue to step in to his opportunity as a leader. How do you feel about uh, special team starters playing on that if, if, if there needed to be? I love it. I love it. You know, Rich has come in and set the standard, and not many people are talking back to him. That's <laughs> 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 true. <laughs> when you talk about the mental layers you see from the young guys early on, what typically is what you see or what they're doing wrong? Or what, what aren't they saying? Oh. What's the typical thing that happens? Well, a lot of times it's, you know, you call two concepts. And, you know, one side is a two-man concept and the other side is a two-man concept. And they forget with some of the motions, you know, what side that I'm on. And am I on the hammer side? Am I on the arrow side? Am I on the all-go side? Am I on the outside? You know, so mixing up which side that they're on, I think, is, is one. Um, and then just little details in certain things, depths of routes, uh, adjustments of routes if it's a two-in-one route, meaning based on a certain coverage, you're going to run this route. If it's a different coverage, you're running uh, the other route, mixing those things up. But this offense is very complex, and you throw in the Matt LaFleur special, all these motions. Uh, it, it really stresses those guys out. Receiver, I will say, though, I think is one of the easier positions to play on offense. And I mean that with absolutely zero disrespect. But like tight ends have to play fullback. Running backs have to do a ton of different things. Uh, obviously, me. The receivers have it, I think, a little bit, a little bit easier. Uh, so I think it's a little more difficult for young running backs and tight ends to come in. But that being said, there's still a lot on their plate. And once you get to the end of this, now we have eight installs that are in, and so you have, you know, not just the 30 plays from that day's install. Now you have 200 plus plays that could be called at any time. And and Matt and Steno like to really test these guys on on the scripting. Aaron, I know you didn't play with him, but how do you feel about Leroy Butler finally being inducted in the Pro Football Hall of Fame this week? I was I was so excited. I saw him at the at the honors, and just to see that look in his eye was really really special. I've known him for a number of years now. That's the beauty of being a Packer. You're always kind of around some of the older guys, and he was, you know, he was fit the criteria. He was a top three player at his position for an extended period of time, and. It's probably long overdue, but I'm really excited that he's finally going in the Hall of Fame. Eric, going back to Romeo, can you tell this early on what a guy can be, or do you need to see him like in a game before you really get excited? I think practice reps at this point are more important than the preseason. I know it's not a popular opinion, but preseason has changed over the years, and it's very vanilla on defense. I'm talking about just offensive players. I think defense you can see tackling uh, and and you know, the contact maybe a little bit more, but for offensive players, the practice reps are the most important reps because we're going against uh, the same level of defenders. So ones go against ones and twos against twos. So there's, there's not a talent difference usually. And you can see the adjustments because defenses don't just play, you know, seven man box too high, six man box, you know, or seven man box, one high, one high man, one high zone, two high zone. That's about all you see in the preseason. In practice, we see pressures. You have to, you know, peak hots. We have adjustments. We have audibles. We have hand signals. We have, uh, you know, reading coverages on the run. We have disguises by our defense. There's so many more things that test our offense in these practice reps, and they are so, so important. The only thing that occasionally happens, in my opinion, is when the lights go on, there are some players who rise to the occasion and some players who shrink. And I think that's all you can see in the preseason, but the practice reps are the most important. Are you going to play in the preseason? I don't know. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Aaron.
I'm sure you've had. Uh, I'm going to him next. Okay, that's fine. Um, I know you've been asked this probably a hundred times before, maybe a hundred, fifteen. What do you remember about your first family night? I remember that we played the Bills, and I completed one pass. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great pass. <laughs> uh, family has changed over the years for sure. You know, it used to be a scrimmage, and then it was. Uh, really rough when it went to ones against twos, and we got beat up pretty good for a lot of years. Uh, AJ Hawk clotheslined me one year. I think I was 2006. Uh, I got bitched out in the meeting for uh, faking a handoff and keeping it on a two-point conversion and spiking it in the end zone. I remember the next day uh, we've had rain outs or lightning outs. One year I remember. You know, we were sitting here for hours. We had like 10, no, I mean, it's probably like 25 pizzas delivered. We're playing cards <laughs> and locker room eating pizza, waiting to see if they're going to, you know, they're holding everybody uh, to see if we're actually going to do this. So family night is a lot of fun. And just like the soccer game the other day, usually the weather is a wild card. <laughs> Aaron, a week into Mags it. is going to go first. Yeah. A week into it, is Tom coaching you any different than previously, or is it just picking up right where you left off? It's different for me because I haven't been coached like that since he was here, but I love it. I really do. Tom just understands the little things in the position, and so every drill is working on one specific thing, and it's really how I was able to polish my fundamentals and learn how to throw in rhythm and throw on time and, and not in, you know make premeditated decisions, one of the quarterback mortal sins. And so we're having a lot of fun. Just this morning, <laughs> you know, we talked about an adjustment in the red zone on a certain play and he goes, yeah, remember you hit driver and I was like, finish the sentence, 2008 at Tennessee. And so that's kind of the fun part of having Tom back. Tom loves the game. He loves being back in it. And for me to have him back in a room, and I've had some great ones over the years. Um, and, and, but Tom will always have a special place in my heart because he was the master when I was the young, young student. And it's great having him back. So much him really good for joining I think so. I really do. Um, I mentioned that to Matt, you know, after the season, that if, uh, if Getz got a job and he want to bring in somebody to teach fundamentals, the right way every single day, then Tom is the guy. Um, and, you know, I remember Matt called me after he met with Tom, and he was like, basically saying what we always say about Tom. You know, what a what a great guy, you know, such an interesting dude, crazy life, wife is, you know, interior decorated to the stars, and he's a, you know, Canadian Football Hall of Famer, turned lawyer, turned whatever the hell he's doing. <laughs> you know. But he's such an interesting guy. He's like the most interesting man in the world. Um, but so I think when they met, it was a, no, a no brainer. And just to watch, again, to watch the attentiveness to the fundamentals, I think is really going to help, uh, you know, Jordan and Danny out. Because if you want to be accurate in this league, you got to throw the ball in rhythm and on balance. And I think for the first time, there's a the right amount of emphasis on those fundamentals. What difference is there between Jordan this week? Or Honestly, you know? that. I have seen that. He threw a ball yesterday, a deep over to Sammy, right? The guy's kind of in his face or whatever. The ball was great, but it all starts with the footwork. At the top of the drop, it was an out, it was an inside zone fake on the left. At the top of his drop, he was heavy, and he one hitched a perfect four five five four, and to throw that ball, that's the difference. When you start figuring out the fundamentals, and throwing from the ground up, the throwing becomes the easy part because your feet tell you exactly when to throw the ball, and that was beautiful footwork. And I love watching him and Danny, you know, when they just trust in the feet because when they do it right. And you've seen some of our slant routes that we're hitting off of action, them hitting it in time. It's all about those fundamentals and really the emphasis on proper hitches, you know, proper hitches in the drop and trusting those hitches to tell you where to throw the football. So I've seen, you know, I really think the biggest difference is year three is always, you know, a jump, but I've seen the fundamentals, you know, get that little cleanup that needed to happen that allows them, I think, to be a little bit more accurate.
Aaron, you talked to Albert Breer kind of had a conversation with you uh, yesterday, and you said that this team is built to win in more than one way. Do you think that's a difference from previous years, and can you expand on that? I don't. I mean, I don't know if I actually said that exactly. Uh, I'm not sure what he was referring to. I, I'm probably talking about our defense and and how good they look on on paper and then on the field in the first week of training camp. Um, I have a lot of confidence in our offense, but you know we're going to be a work in progress, especially on the outside and up front. Uh, special teams will be very important to us. You know, breaking even at bare minimum, but. We got an incredibly accurate kicker. We got a great holder and punter. And with these, some of these starters playing teams, I think you're naturally going to see probably an uptick. Aaron, Tom Brady turns 45 today. Do you see yourself playing until that age in the NFL? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. But happy birthday, Tom. <laughs>